Imagine standing on the deck of a warship, the salty sea air mixing with the smoke of cannon fire. In the midst of this chaos, two titans of history, Napoleon Bonaparte and Horatio Nelson, are about to clash in a battle that will echo through the ages. Welcome to the Battle of Trafalgar, where the fate of empires hung on the edge of a sword and the roar of cannons. But why did this battle hold such significance? And how did it shape the world as we know it? Stay with us as we dive into a tale of strategy, courage, and intrigue. In the early 19th century, Europe was akin to a grand chessboard of power, with each nation maneuvering for dominance. At the center of this intricate game was Napoleon Bonaparte, the ambitious French emperor whose grand strategy was to extend French influence across the continent. However, this vision was met with fierce resistance. Britain, a long-standing rival of France, declared war, recognizing the threat Napoleon posed to the balance of power. This declaration wasn't just an act of resistance. It was a rallying cry that led to the formation of the Third Coalition, uniting various European powers in a common cause against French domination. At the forefront of Britain's defense was the British Royal Navy, commanded by none other than the indomitable Admiral Horatio Nelson. Known for his fearless leadership and innovative tactics, Nelson was the embodiment of British naval power. The Royal Navy wasn't just a fleet. It was the guardian of Britain's freedom, the protector of its trade routes, and the symbol of its global reach. As Napoleon's armies marched across Europe, rewriting borders and toppling thrones, the British Royal Navy patrolled the seas, safeguarding Britain from invasion and maintaining crucial trade routes. It was this strategic game of cat and mouse, between French ambition and British resolve, that set the stage for the monumental clash at Trafalgar. Thus, when the fleets of France and Spain sailed to challenge British naval power, it was more than a battle at sea, it was a confrontation between two contrasting visions of Europe's future, a clash of titans orchestrated by Napoleon and Nelson. As we delve deeper into this epic saga, a twist in alliances adds to the intrigue. Spain, once an ally of Britain, found itself in a precarious position. The Spanish monarchy, under pressure from Napoleon's expanding empire, was coerced into an alliance with France. This dramatic shift turned former allies into adversaries on the high seas. The Spanish fleet, renowned for its own proud maritime tradition, was now aligned with Napoleon's ambitions. This alliance was more than a mere tactical arrangement. It was a symbol of the rapidly shifting allegiances and the complex diplomatic chess game being played across Europe. The Spanish ships, sailing alongside the French under the same banner, formed a part of the mighty armada that faced Nelson at Trafalgar. This unexpected alliance was a testament to the far-reaching influence of Napoleon's strategies and the volatile nature of international relations during this tumultuous period in history. In the intricate tapestry of Napoleon's grand designs, the Battle of Trafalgar, while significant, was just one thread among many. The French emperor's overarching ambition was the invasion and subjugation of Britain, a plan that hinged on a delicate balance of land and sea power. To this end, he began assembling the Grand Armée, a force unparalleled in its size and diversity, drawing soldiers from across the French Empire and its allied states. This army was more than a mere collection of troops. It was the embodiment of Napoleon's imperial dreams and a symbol of his confidence in his military prowess. However, by the time Trafalgar's cannons roared, a crucial shift had occurred. The invasion of Britain, once the centerpiece of Napoleon's strategy, had been temporarily shelved. The emperor had redirected his focus to the continent, where the Ulm campaign was unfolding. This strategic pivot underlined Napoleon's adaptability which marked his approach to the geopolitical chess game of Europe. Simultaneously, an intriguing financial subplot played out. Britain, in a stroke of strategic financing, indirectly funded Napoleon's invasion plans. The British loaned money to the United States for the Louisiana Purchase. This transaction, in turn, provided Napoleon with the funds he desperately needed to finance his military campaigns, including the one against Britain itself. 
This irony of history highlights the interconnectedness of global events and the unintended consequences that can arise from the machinations of empire. Thus, while Trafalgar was a battle for naval supremacy, it also represented a convergence of multiple strategic threads, the redirection of Napoleon's focus to continental Europe, the complex financial interplay between nations and the evolving nature of military and geopolitical strategy in the early 19th century. As dawn broke on the 21st of October 1805, the sea near Cape Trafalgar transformed into an arena where history would be written in thunder and smoke. Admiral Lord Horatio Nelson, aboard his flagship HMS Victory, faced an imposing Franco-Spanish fleet, vastly outnumbering his own. But numbers alone don't write history. Strategy and valor do. Nelson, a tactician par excellence, crafted a daring plan. He split his fleet into two columns, intending to slice through the enemy's line, a move as audacious as it was risky. This was no ordinary battle formation. It was a stroke of genius that would forever change naval warfare. As the two fleets converged, the sea became a tumultuous mosaic of roaring cannons, splintering wood, and valiant hearts. The British ships, with their well-trained crews and superior firepower, pierced the enemy line, turning disciplined formations into a maelstrom of chaos. Amidst the cannonade, a singular drama unfolded on the deck of HMS Victory Nelson leading from the front, as always, was struck down by a sniper's bullet. Even as he lay dying, his spirit undimmed, he urged his men onward to victory. On the other side, Admiral Villeneuve, commanding the Franco-Spanish Armada, watched as his grand line crumbled under the relentless British assault. The larger, but less cohesive, Franco-Spanish fleet struggled against the disciplined ferocity of the Royal Navy. Ship after ship fell to the British guns, a testament to Nelson's strategic brilliance and the valor of his sailors. As the sun set over Trafalgar, it illuminated a decisive British victory. The Franco-Spanish fleet was decimated, but the cost was high, as the British mourned their lion Nelson, whose legacy would immortalize him as one of history's greatest naval commanders. Trafalgar was not just a battle, it was a turning point. This battle, fought on the restless waves of the Atlantic, was more than a clash of ships and cannons. It was a collision of ambitions, strategies, and historical forces. Napoleon's grand plan to invade Britain, already redirected by his continental campaigns, faced its ultimate demise in the waters off Trafalgar. The battle underscored the complexity of early 19th century geopolitics, where strategies on land intertwined with maneuvers at sea and global finance played as crucial a role as military might. In the aftermath of Trafalgar, the world witnessed the rise of British naval supremacy, the thwarting of Napoleon's maritime aspirations, and the shaping of international dynamics for decades to come. This pivotal moment in history teaches us about the fluid nature of alliances, the far-reaching impact of financial decisions, and the unpredictable outcomes of great power struggles. What do you think would have happened if Napoleon had succeeded at Trafalgar? How do you think our world would be different today? Share your thoughts and insights in the comments below. If you enjoyed this journey through the turbulent waters of history, please hit the like button, share this video with fellow history enthusiasts, and don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into the fascinating events that have shaped our world. Until next time, keep the wheels of time turning.